Hi there, this is an exclusive Hey everybody, thought I'd share a little video here about a radio project that I worked on a while back. What this is, is a one transistor regenerative receiver uh, for the AM broadcast band. The sort of impetus for working on this project was that uh, we have a day at our uh, university where I work uh, where we bring in students uh, from high school, middle school, all the way down to elementary school and show them different projects in different areas of engineering and I thought I'd show a simple radio project something that you could build at home with you know Radio Shack components and you know a few extra things that you get off of the web or uh, from other places but and also because I was just interested in these regenerative regenerative receivers and uh, eventually I'd like to do a vacuum tube version but this was quick and simple just to sort of uh, demonstrate the principle to myself I guess so, right here is the actual transistor, the one transistor that makes the radio receiver. Over here is uh, an LM3D6 audio amp, which just takes the very uh, small amplitude signal that this one transistor uh, produces when it receives the radio signal and amplifies it to something that we can actually hear on a, on a speaker. The whole thing runs off of one 9-volt battery. Uh, I've got a hand-wound coil here and a tuning capacitor. Uh, coil form has the classic, uh, you know, toilet paper tube. This is actually a uh, part of a paper towel roll from like a, you know, commercial grade paper towels, the, r the rough brown paper towels. This is actually a little bit thicker cardboard than from a standard uh, toilet paper roll. And so when you wind this uh, 22 gauge magnet wire on it, uh, it doesn't uh, tend to collapse like the, the thinner cardboard on the toilet paper rolls does. Uh, a couple of potentiometers down here for volume control and regeneration. And it's already powered up, so let's just go ahead and I'll turn up the volume and maybe you can hear some of it. So that whistle you just heard is when the radio goes into oscillation. If I get a little closer here you can maybe actually hear the uh, station that I'm tuned into. It's kind of faint. I've actually found out that if I take the whole radio and turn it on its side, the signal gets quite a bit louder. Answer your questions toll free at 888-83-FUNDS. That's 888-83-FUNDS. So maybe I should have mounted that coil horizontally. Works a little better outside, actually, when you're you're not surrounded by your uh, interference from computers and everything else you have around. Uh, let me just set it up again I'll try and tune around and get some different stations just to show you how the tuning works but you have the regeneration control right here which is sort of like the gain of that transistor circuit and uh, as you tune for different stations and let me get the volume and everything set just right here but as you tune for different stations Not a lot going on right now because it's early morning and it's hard to get uh, good reception. This works really well at night uh, when there's not the you know solar interference. So the way the tuning works is uh, you get a station or you get close to a station. And then you adjust this regeneration control. So if you turn it down, station gets weaker, fades out. Turn it back up. And eventually it starts to whistle like that. 
So the goal is you want to get it as close to that whistling stage, that oscillation point, and then tune it and turn it back just a little bit below that. So that station's tuned in pretty good right now. And then I can adjust the volume. Just a simple point-to-point -point wiring underneath here. This is just a piece of that prototype board like you can get from Radio Shack or anywhere else. Nothing special. Um, all the components are on the top except for these three diodes down here, and I'll explain those in a second why they're there. Um, as I pointed out, the tuning coil and capacitor and all the goodies in here, if I can get a good picture of those. but. A lot of filter capacitors around this audio amp because you get sort of, uh, I guess, sub, maybe you call them sub harmonics or, or whatnot that come from the, the RF and from the, when the, the oscillation of this transistor when you get uh, near that uh, uh, regeneration, that, that oscillation point. Kind of went overkill here. I had a silver mica, mica capacitor sitting around, so I actually put a silver mica cap in this thing. It's definitely overkill for what this gadget is. But, uh, hey, why not? Some old school looking uh, carbon resistors there that I had lying around. Uh, one tantalum capacitor and then just some regular old electrolytics for filtering this audio amp. Now, those the uh, uh, reason for those three diodes underneath was that when I originally built this, I was going off of a design that I found online. So... As you so often do, you know, I decided I wanted to build one of these one transistor radios. I googled for a schematic, and I came up with uh, this schematic, which uh, is a pretty simple design. You got your one transistor right there, your auto amp over here, and uh, here's the address of that if you're interested in looking it up. And the guy's got some basic instructions on down here how to operate it, what voltages to run it off of, and so on, and uh, how many turns to put on different size coil forms, and so on and so forth. Well, I wanted to kind of get the original source of this, because he had down here that uh, this came out of Electronics Now, from July 1997. So I went over to our university library and looked around, and... Guess what? We actually had that issue of Electronics Now. And here's the original article and the original schematic. And notice the original schematic here does not feature that LM386 audio amp. So on the far right there where it says audio out, uh, the intention is that you hook up something like high impedance headphones or a crystal earpiece. Um, I wanted to gear this towards something that you know students could easily build, you know, kids could build very easily, didn't need any, any weird components, so high impedance headphones and crystal air pieces are a little bit weird, uh, hard to come by. Uh, I have a pair of high impedance headphones, you know, I like snagged off eBay a long time ago, but most kids don't want to have to fool with getting stuff like that. So. The nice thing about this design is that it does use the LM386 audio amp, and you can just plug a standard 8-ohm uh, speaker into it, or standard uh, you know, earbud, or whatever you have on hand. So going back into this design, um, you'll notice that for the biasing network on the transistor, we just have a simple uh, resistor divider, which is okay if your supply voltage is very stable but in this case because you know this transistor is going into oscillation you know we could be running off of you know this says six volt battery the original article said a nine volt battery um, so there's all this potential variation in what this bias voltage on this transistor can be so uh, I had a lot of trouble with this circuit when I first built it you know, it would just sit there and squeal constantly. You know, couldn't get any stations in at all. And I fiddled around with it, and I eventually found a set of four AA batteries that managed to get, you know, the, the base at uh, the right uh, bias voltage so that it didn't sit there and just squeal constantly. But I thought, you know, that's, that's also not very convenient for people who actually want to build this circuit and uh, have it work 
you know, without having to fool around with it too much. So I did some more research on uh, these regenerative one transistor receivers and eventually came up with uh, another article, this simple regen for beginners. And I actually found a number of articles by this author, Charles Kitchen. And this dude is sort of like, I don't know, the god of uh, regenerative uh, receivers or something. But he's got a ton of articles around in the ham radio magazines and different uh, electronics magazines online. So I looked at a couple of his designs, including uh, this one here. And the crucial thing I noticed with his designs, all of them, is that for the base of his transistor, he always uses three diodes to ground like this. And quite obviously, he's clamping that uh, base voltage using the uh, series diode connections, so you have a nice constant voltage there at the base of your transistor. So what I did was I went back and modified my design, which I'll show you just now. So here's actually the schematic for my design. And I just went in, and where this resistor divider network was in the original design, I just put three diodes across that bottom resistor. Uh, and that actually solved all of my weird oscillation problems where the, the thing would sit there and not pick up any stations and just oscillate constantly. This seems to work pretty well regardless of uh, supply voltage. You know, in my case I'm using 9 volts, but you, know, you could easily use 6 volts or whatever you have on hand. Um, so that, that pretty much took care of that oscillation problem. And now the radio is functional, if somewhat quiet, uh, depending on how it's oriented. oriented. Of course, very sensitive to uh, hand capacitance, and if you touch it at all, you get that 60 hertz hum, buzz. So that's the radio, and that's, that's pretty much how it works. Um, not super happy with this performance wise just because you know it is so touchy and um, even after I've fixed the, the oscillation problem it, it's still it's still pretty touchy and um, not very good at picking up um, you know even even slightly weak stations whereas a standard radio uh, has no problems at all so what I've decided to do, the reason I'm making this video is uh, I'm very shortly going to, to destroy this radio. I'm going to rip it apart and uh, turn it into something else. I'm going to use the, reuse the coil and the capacitor and uh, turn it into a new project. Um, but I thought I'd just go ahead and, and show this circuit as is and how, well, how it works and how it doesn't work very well. And if I am going to revisit this at some point in the future, uh, I will almost certainly uh, build this design from uh, Mr. Kitchen, this uh, simple region for beginners. This one actually, you know, picks up the shortwave bands and the ham radio bands. So it's going to be, you know, more interesting listening. This is just standard, plain old AM radio, and, uh, you know, there's not much on AM radio anymore. Uh, even if you run your own transmitter, you know, you can play music, but who wants to listen to music on a tinny little speaker like this? So, yeah, I'm going to tear this one apart, rebuild it into something else, and uh, down the road someday maybe I'll build a new uh, regenerative receiver. But if you're looking for a you know, schematic, something that we want to build, build a regenerative radio from, you know, this design works, but it needs some modifications. If I had to make a recommendation, I would say this design, which... Uh, I'll show you the link for this up here. You can get this free. It's just on one of the uh, ham radio websites. From the, actually from the ARRL. So, check it out. And I think I'll just finish up here. And That's my, that's my one transistor uh, regenerative receiver. What's left of it. Shortly to be destroyed. Probably for an AM transmitter. Uh, reuse the tuning coil as the uh, uh, sort of filter for a, a simple transmitter. Okay, well, see you guys later.